Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at the Sony CDP CE375 compact disc player. This is a 5 CD changer from uh, early 2000s, maybe 2003. It's a little bit scratched up. I bought it mainly because it was too cheap to resist, $7.99. So generally speaking, 5 CD changers are pretty plentiful in thrift stores. If you want one of those, you can get one for in the 10 to 20 dollar range generally uh, sometimes they're stacked up this one has a digital optical output as well as a uh, analog output I haven't tried it out yet but we'll do that next got it hooked through this watt meter showing zero watts which surprises me with it off usually there's some sort of ambient power for remote control do some basic functions we got the display lighting up Seems to open smoothly. Some of these have problems with the uh, front tray where they don't open properly due to a bad belt. Uh, I've seen that in Yamaha players in particular. So next we'll get it going with some sound and see what it sounds like. I'm loading in a CD that I made of free YouTube music where the YouTube copyright cops don't get on me. Seems to be working fine. Got a uh, nice sounding stereo. This is running through the uh, analog interface. Let's see if we can get the uh, optical going. So it turns out I've got the optical interface going on Digital 3, I'm using this Marantz uh, AV receiver as my test receiver for the moment. I did a series about that if you want to check it out. So this seems to work just fine. We'll try some more basic functions. Pause. Stop. Uh, let's try. This is an audio test CD I'll put into disc 2. So we'll hit the disc 2 button. This has it navigated to about this area, so I'm assuming that's where the CD player itself is. They always have a single CD player that's fed by the tray mechanism. So this isn't really exciting, it's just a test tone. Uh, I found on other Sony players like this that this is the, the track, so we're going to get different frequencies as we go through that. Now that it's playing, it's drawing about 9 watts. Okay, so now we're back to our uh, YouTube copyright safe music. So here's a different track, just going through the tracks. We can fast forward, we can reverse. Uh, everything seems to be working very well here. So I'm going to call this winner. Now in the next part of our video, we're going to uh, pop the lid on this and see what's inside. I thought this would have the standard arrangement on it, uh, but it has a little different arrangement. It has two large screws on each side, that's standard, two small screws on the back. And usually they have a lip that goes underneath here, but this is just kind of a slot. So we'll take the lid off of that. Okay, I was wrong about the location of the CD player mechanism. It's in the back. I thought it was kind of more on the side here. But uh, let's fire it back up again and uh, kind of see it in action. So here's the seeking mechanism. Play some more of our free music. We'll go to a new track in case you're getting tired of the old one. So here you can see the, uh, this looks like basically the power supply board for it. These always have a special front panel board. It's connected by this ribbon cable. Uh, this looks like a fairly simple power supply, which is uh, this transformer evidently makes multiple voltages. Um, got some bypass capacitors some regulators, uh, a cable 
that goes over to the CD player itself underneath here. Now let's take a quick look at the tray in operation. So we're playing this disc right now, or at least spinning it. So this gives us a better view of the inside mechanism. You can see there's a lot of plastic parts and gears here. It's a little bit of metal as we get into the CD player itself. But compared to the Yamaha design, since this doesn't appear to have a belt, that's a real advantage because the belt won't stretch or wear out or whatever goes wrong with them. The gear teeth, uh, even though they're plastic, should last indefinitely um, because there isn't really any big wear item involved in that. Now another thing we see on this board is some of the analog I.O. that goes through here evidently uh, and the optical. So this is the optical. Here's the uh, stereo analog output. Here's power supply over to the main power switch which is on its own little board here. I would assume there's an analog to digital converter underneath this board maybe. Uh, a lot of times these are one-sided boards. Actually this looks like a one-sided board. So maybe the signals come across directly from the CD player through this ribbon cable and then maybe some sort of minimal conditioning here such as, let's look under there, I'm guessing that's a multi-op amp so uh, to boost or clean up the signal at that point some little basic conditioning components and then out we go to the back let's rotate this to, uh, we're going to pick disc 5 which is this empty slot Let's see if it'll do that. Then it decides there's nothing there, so it reverses just for fun. Let's go to disc 3. Oh, it's going to keep going. So I'm going to fool it and put something in disc 5 now. But then, which is our audio test tone CD. Let's see if we can... Oh, we're already on disc 5, so I guess this is disc 4 that I just replaced. I'm going to have to stop first. Disc skip. Doesn't like that. Maybe it thinks there isn't one in disc 5. I'll tell you what, so these things typically don't have memory once they turn off which is why they always do this sort of a seeking behavior when they start. So let's cycle the power on this. It'll go to the first one it finds, but now it'll go to disc 5 because it doesn't think there isn't a disc in disc 5. It didn't know, so it believed me. Now, likewise, it doesn't know on disc 4, but it's going to go back to disc 5. So the logic of disc selection in this is, you know, logical, except. Uh, with a proviso that there's nothing uh, that it remembers about the state of the discs that are in it across power cycles. Let's go to some different test tones just for fun. Here's one I can't hear, maybe you can. Okay, turn that up pretty loud. So without taking this further apart, which I don't plan to do, Everything here looks good, no problems. We'll do a quick uh, inspection of the capacitor. None of those are bulged. It works well on a functional test basis. Uh, all of the knobs and buttons that I've tried seem to work. So uh, this is a real success and quite the bargain for $7.99. That ends our video. Thanks for watching and bye bye.